working to connect a region of over 600 cultural million bridges between our lands. Welcome to ASEAN and Focus. We're coming to you live from Manila in Cambodia. Hello, Crystal. Thank you for joining me today. Hello, Alma. Good afternoon. I am Crystal Ann Balisteros from your EBC Cambodia Bureau, bringing you the news in the dynamic ASEAN region. On today's headlines. Some areas in Luzon and the Visayas have been placed under tropical cyclone wind signal number three as Typhoon Jolina continues to move west-northwestward over the Samar Sea. Singapore will start giving coronavirus vaccine booster shots to the elderly and those with weak immune systems. And Britain's new HMS Queen Elizabeth aircraft carrier port called to Japan in a mission that adds to pressure from Tokyo, the U.S. and allies on China over its increasingly assertive regional maritime presence. Singapore has opened a wildlife forensic center that aims to help in the fight against smuggling networks by analyzing seized body parts from endangered animals, from ivory to pangolin scales. First, here in the Philippines, some areas in Luzon and the Visayas have been placed under tropical cyclone wind signal number three as Typhoon Jolina continues to move north, or rather west-northwestward over the summer sea. In its 8 a.m. weather bulletin, Pagasa said these areas are the northern and eastern portions of Masbate, and that includes Tikau and Burias Islands, the extreme western portion of northern Samar, the northern portion of Biliran, and the northwestern portion of Samar. Destructive typhoon force winds may be experienced in these areas within 18 hours, according to Pagasa. Meanwhile, the following areas have been placed under signal number two, and that is Albay, Sorsagon, the rest of Masbate, the western and southern portions of Camarines Sur, the western portion of Camarines Norte, Marinduque, the southern portion of Quezon, and the eastern portion of Romblon. Also placed under signal number two are the rest of Biliran, the western portion of northern Samar, the rest of Samar, and the northern portion of Leyte. Areas under signal number two may have gale force to storm force winds within 24 hours. On the other hand, areas under signal number one are Catanduanes, the rest of Camarines Sur, the rest of Camarines Norte, the rest of Quezon, including Polillo Islands, Laguna, Cavite, Batangas, Rizal, Metro Manila, Bulacan, the rest of Romblon and Oriental Mindoro, the rest of Northern Samar, the rest of Eastern Samar, the rest of Leyte, the northern portion of Southern Leyte, including Camotes and Bantayan Islands, the northeastern portion of Iloilo, and the northern portion of Capiz. Meanwhile, several local government units in Eastern Visayas have suspended classes and work in the government sector today due to the threats of Typhoon Jolina and the region. Now, local authorities have been issuing executive orders as precautionary measures in anticipation of strong winds and heavy rains. Those that suspended work and classes are the cities of Tacloban, Ormoc, Catbalogan, and Calbayog and the provinces of Northern Samar, Samar, Eastern Samar, and Biliran. Exempted from work suspension are those involved in the maintenance of peace and order, national or the disaster risk management, health and sanitation, and traffic management. Local governments have decided to suspend work and classes after the Philippine Atmospheric Geophysical and Astro Astronomical Services Administration, or PAGASA, raised tropical cyclone wind signals in some parts of eastern Visayas. Virtual classes, particularly in private schools and colleges, which already started their school year, were canceled as massive power outages hit the region, 
placed under signal number three are the extreme western portion of northern Samar, the northern portion of Biliran, and the northwestern portion of Samar province. Moving over to Thailand, as the Tourism and Sports Ministry vows to open the whole country without quarantine by January next year, we have Gladys Penuela from EBC Thailand Bureau. Hi, Gladys. Hello, uh, Chris Powell. Good afternoon to you. Now, Chris Powell here in Thailand is set to open by January of next year. This was according to the Tourism and Sports Ministry, which stated that reopening will still depend on the nationwide herd immunity. Tourism and Sports Minister Pipa Tratchake Patakan said that as part of the second phase, Bangkok will still reopen on November instead of October, as the residents will still get their second dose of vaccine at the end of the said month. Meanwhile, Chiang Mai, uh, Prachua, Kirikan, uh, Chanburi, and Pachabri will open on October 1st. Tifat said those areas has not yet started its standard operating procedures or SOPs and needs to expedite this month. Tifat also said that during their meeting last Friday, it was agreed that the third phase of reopening will be implemented to some provinces under the 7 plus 7 extension program. Tifat also said that they will propose a list to the Center for COVID-19 Situation Administration for the allocation of vaccines to those areas. He added that areas which will not meet the required level for vaccination, then in isolation or a sealed route for a selected district, will be applied at an early stages. On the other hand, safe areas will be open to five tourists on November 1st, while international tourists can enter the country without quarantine, led by travel bubbles with neighboring countries starting January 15th of next year. Back to Crystal. Thank you for your report, uh, Gladys. I hope everything will get better soon in Thailand. Sure. Well, uh, from Thailand, uh, Bangkok, Thailand, this is Gladys Pinwala. We live in interesting times. Thank you, Gladys. Meanwhile, Cambodia's vaccination of adolescents aged 12 to 17 has hit a speed bump. Let's find out more from our EBC co-anchor, Crystal Ann Balaceros. Crystal, please tell me all about this. Yes, Alma, you are right. Cambodia, which started vaccination of adolescents aged 12 to 17 on August 1st, has hit a speed bump as efforts to fully vaccinate this age group, accounting to more than 1.9 million, has slowed down significantly. This speed bump comes as provinces nationwide are rushing to get schools ready for reopening. Priya Sihanu province has already announced the opening of five schools for grades 9 to 12 on September 13 to enable the students to prepare for their respective exams in grade 9 and 12. To date, in 37 days, the number of adolescents vaccinated stands at 1,682,786, comprising those who have received at least one dose of the COVID-19 vaccine. Of this, only 561,893 adolescents have been fully vaccinated during an estimated 17 days period. Of the number who have received at least one dose of the vaccine, females accounted for 834,647, while female adolescents fully vaccinated stands at 280,550. In the United States and Europe, medical evidence shows that unvaccinated children were now being infected in high numbers and have overwhelmed children's hospitals. In addition, third, the booster shots for frontliners comprising medical and security personnel who are dealing with the influx of migrant workers and their families and classified as high-risk category stands at 680,353. The booster doses for frontliners, especially health personnel, is critical as many have been infected and deaths have also been recorded caused by the Delta variant of COVID-19. Booster doses have also been announced in Phnom Penh, where government officials and their families are eligible to get the third booster dose from yesterday. However, the numbers receiving the booster doses are still limited 
due to the long queues and slow vaccination process in the centers designated for this purpose. At least one vaccine, Janssen & Janssen vaccines are fast running out and less than 100,000 doses remain. Cambodia had received a total of 1.6 million doses of J&J &J vaccines contributed by the United States through the COVAX initiative. Of these, a total of 913,542 doses have already been administered, mostly to population in remote in remote in remote hard to access areas in the country. Meanwhile, the increase of COVID-19 infections in some regions is slowing down, but the country's case classification and health systems capacity remain at high risk. A health official said Monday, speaking at an online media forum, Health Undersecretary Maria Rosario Verheri said 95% of the province's highly urbanized cities and independent component cities are still flagged under alert alert level 3 or 4. Let's listen in. Pa rin ang kaso ng COVID-19 sa ating bansa. At this very crucial time that we are gradually opening up our economy, kami po sa Department of Health ay muling nananawagan sa sama-samang pagkilos upang mapigilan ang pagkalat ng sakit at mapanatiling ligtas sa COVID-19 ang ating mga sarili at ang ating mga mahal sa buhay. Dapat po tama ang pagsuot ng mask at face shield Hindi po kwintas ang face mask at hindi rin po headband ang face shield. Hanggat maaari, hawa, iwasan po nating hawakan ang ating mga face mask. Kung kailangang hubarin ang face mask, alisin ito sa pamamagitan sa paghawak sa ear loops o dun sa tali, sa tenga. Yun po ang hahawakan nyo pag tinatanggal nyo ang face mask nyo. Palagyan po tayo magugas ng kamay gamit ang tubig at sabon o gumamit po ng alkohol. I-disinfect ang mga bagay na laging hinahawakan. Manatili po tayo sa bahay, maliban lamang kung may mahalaga po tayong gawain sa labas ng bahay. Kumain po tayo na masusustansyang pagkain at uminom ng maraming tubig para lumakas po ang ating resistensya. Agad po tayong mag-isolate kung nakakaranas na po tayo ng simptomas ng COVID-19 o alam po natin na na-expose tayo sa isang positibong kaso. Agad po tayong tumawag sa mga telemedicine providers o di kaya tumawag sa ating local government unit, yung kanilang Barangay Health Emergency Response Teams para matulungan po kayo kung ano ang inyong gagawin kung sakasakaling nakakaranas na kayo ng simptomas. Huwag po kayo mag-aalinlangang sabihin sa inyong close contacts ang resulta ng inyong COVID-19 test para mapigilan na po natin ang patuloy na pagdami ng mga kaso sa ating komunidad. Suguraduhin po natin na maayos ang daluyan ng hangin kung tayo po ay nasa loob ng bahay. Buksan po natin ang ating mga bintana at pintuan para tuloy-tuloy po ang pagdaloy ng hangin. Magpabakuna na po tayo kung pwede na po tayo at hikayatin din po natin ang ating mga kamag-anak, ang ating mga kapitbahay para magpabakuna. Libre po ang bakuna. Magparehistro lamang kayo sa inyong local governments. At kumuha po tayo ng totoo at tamang informasyon mula lamang sa mga valid sources ng information. The Department of Health called for the strict implementation of granular lockdowns, shortening of interval between detection and isolation, enforcement of minimum public health standards adherence to pot community transmission, and ramp up priority vaccination to protect the vulnerable population. Meanwhile, Australia is uh, delivering 500,000 COVID-19 vaccine doses to Indonesia as part of our part of the partnership with the uh, close neighbor and strategic partner as uh, they respond to the COVID-19 pandemic. Now, these vaccine doses are the first installment of Australia's commitment to share 2.5 million AstraZeneca doses with Indonesia in 2021. They are an important component of Australia's health response package for Indonesia announced in July, adding to the 1,000 ventilators, 700 oxygen 
concentrators and 20,000 rapid antigen tests already delivered. Since March this year, the COVAX has provided more than 90 million doses to Indonesia. In addition, Indonesia will benefit from Australia's $100 million contribution to the Quad Vaccine Partnership with the U.S., Japan, and India. Malacanang on Monday said the global supply problem hampers the government from procuring in bulk COVID-19 treatment drugs, particularly the anti-inflammatory tocilizumab. Presidential spokesperson Harry Roque confirmed the country is having a shortage of tocilizumab, a repurposed drug for COVID-19. Let's take a look. Some 2,000 workers from the construction and manufacturing centers are set to be inoculated against the coronavirus disease in Manila on September 8. In a virtual forum late Monday afternoon, Department of Labor and Employment or DOLE Secretary Silvestro Bellu III said the rollout of the vaccination program for workers in these sectors will be held at the Fort Santiago in Intramuros, Manila. He said inoculation activities will also be conducted in other areas such as Central Luzon and Calabarzon. He said the total target number of beneficiaries is around 126,000 workers that will receive two doses. Bello added that the two industries were selected since they are the major business operations responsible for the growth of the economy. Deputy Minister of Health Dante uh, Saxono Harbuono has said that the decline in COVID-19 cases in Indonesia is an opportunity to strengthen medical resilience in the country. Strengthening medical resilience is necessary because in several countries, such as the United States, Britain, and Israel, cases began to increase even though their vaccination rates were relatively high, he explained. When there is a decline in cases like the current one, hospitals must improve their service quality, optimize handling protocols, and evaluate COVID-19 treatment properly, he advised. In addition to drugs, the primary protection that is important in medical resilience is oxygen, he noted. At the time COVID-19 cases had escalated, Indonesia had experienced a lack of oxygen, the minister noted. Therefore, he informed the government had made several modifications, including installing oxygen generator generators in hospitals. Meanwhile, in Singapore, they will start giving coronavirus vaccine booster shots to, to the elderly and those with weak immune systems. Officials said Friday as cases rise despite high inoculation rates. The city-state joins a number of countries worldwide in giving a third jab to the most vulnerable groups as it faces a new outbreak driven by the Delta variant. The health ministry said an expert com committee had recommended the third dose for people aged 60 and above and those with weak immune systems. Health Minister Ong Ye Kung described the decision as a preemptive step before antibodies wane further. For the over 60s, the boosters can be given six to nine months after the second shot, which means as early as this month for some. For those with weak immune systems, it should be administered after two months. Immune systems can be weakened by some diseases or by treatments for illnesses such as cancer. Giving a third uh, job to the most vulnerable groups is in line with measures adopted in other countries, such as Israel and Germany, according to the health ministry. The U.S. Food and Drug Administration has also approved a third dose for those with weak immune systems and is considering it for the elderly. Singapore has shifted to a strategy of living with the virus instead of regularly imposing lockdowns to eradicate it as vaccination rates increase.
And Priscilla and I will be back right after this break. Innovation, digital disruption, globalization. Startups, micro, small, and medium enterprises, as well as large corporations, all face interesting challenges in the market today. Peek into the world of exciting opportunities and partnerships to drive growth with the latest business news and information. We are open for business. Your weekly dose of entrepreneurial inspiration to update you on the latest developments in the world of business. Get up close and personal with CEOs and thought leaders to help you discover valuable insights Sharpen your instincts for smart decision-making with the latest markets and economic trends, disruptive ideas, global innovation, social entrepreneurship, and other leading-edge business ideas. Join the conversations to create a more vibrant environment for entrepreneurship. Catch Open for Business from Vision to Action. Sila ang mga kinikilalang bayaning may mahalagang papel para magkamit ang kalayaan at pagbabago sa Pilipinas. Pero sa panahong ito, may mga bagong bayaning nakikipaglaban sa sakit na lumaganap sa buong daigdig, ang COVID-19. Ang ating mga frontliner gaya ng healthcare workers, mga doktor, nurses, medical technologists, at iba pang health professionals, mga pulis, sundalo, security guards, mga tauhan na nangangalaga sa seguridad at mahahalagang pangangailangan ng bawat komunidad. Ang mga bagong bayani ating pasalamatan. Kilalani ang kanilang sakripisyo at serbisyo para sa lahat. Ang mga bagong balita aarangkada kada umaga. Welcome back to the program. Britain's new Queen Elizabeth aircraft carrier has paid a portfolio to Japan in a mission that adds to pressure from Tokyo. The U.S. and allies on China over its increasingly assertive regional maritime presence. The Queen Elizabeth is the flagship of the U.K.'s carrier strike group de deployment, which has been making stops around Japan and carrying out exercises along with vessels from allied nations in recent weeks. Quote, this port called to Japan by the British Carrier Strike Group and the joint exercises represent the intent of our two nations, end of quote. Japan's Defense Minister Nobuo Kishi said Monday at Yokosuka Base, where the British ship is visiting. He said both nations have voiced opposition to, un to unilateral efforts to change their status in the disputed East China and South China Seas and the importance of a free and open maritime order. In a statement, the British Embassy in Tokyo said the deployment was a powerful demonstration of the UK's close and enduring partnership with Japan and the UK's commitment to maritime security mm -hmm. in the Indo-Pacific <clears throat> region. Beijing's claims to the entire South China Sea encompass an inhibited islets that lie barely above the waterline, as well as man-made islands built to house airstrips and military bases. Meanwhile, the Senate here in the Philippines approved on third and final reading the bill seeking to reset the first regular elections in the Bangsamoro Autonomous Region in Muslim Mindanao or BARM with a vote of 15-3-1. In his uh, sponsorship speech, local government committee chairman Francis Tolentino said, despite the hard work 
and the accomplishments of the Bangsamora Transition Authority, or BTA, the global pandemic posed significant challenges to the execution of the priority programs and projects of the Bangsamoro government. After holding committee hearings and a consultation with stakeholders, the Rintino Cities Committee saw the need to extend the barn transition period to uh, implement the political and normalization efforts embodied in the comprehensive agreement on the Bang Samoro. Under the bill, upon the expiration of the terms of the incumbent members of the BTA, the president shall appoint 80 members of BTA who will serve up to June 30, 2025, or until the election of their successors. And we're still following the developments on Typhoon Jolina. Fierce winds brought by Typhoon Jolina caused widespread power outages in eastern Visayas, affecting 286,243 power consumers. The National Grid Corporation of the Philippines, or NGCP, reported Tuesday. At least five transmission lines failed to function, causing blackouts in Tacloban City and nearby towns, the entire Samar province, and all towns in eastern Samar. The lights went out late Monday in some parts of Leyte and eastern Samar, while Samar areas experienced power outages before dawn on Tuesday. The power interruption has affected at least 286,243 power consumers, both households and establishments being served by five electric cooperatives. Typhoon Jolina unleashed its wrath Monday night when it crossed Summer Island. It made its first landfall in Hernani, Eastern Samar. As of 8 a.m. on Tuesday, the typhoon was spotted moving west-northwestward over Samar Sea to Maspate. The center of the eye of the typhoon was estimated based on all available data over the coastal waters of Almagro <clears throat> Samar. It has maximum sustained winds of 120 km per hour near the center, gustiness of up to 150 km per hour. A Vietnamese man has been sentenced to five years in jail for spreading COVID-19 after he breached home quarantine rules. Now, Levan Tree was convicted of spreading dangerous infectious diseases to other people after he traveled to his home province, Kham Mau, from coronavirus hotspot Ho Chi Minh City in July, according to a report on the website of the Provincial People's Court. The 28-year-old was accused of breaching a 21-day home quarantine regulation in the southern province, which had a lower case rate than Ho Chi Minh City, and he tested positive for COVID-19 on July 7. Now, state media said eight people became infected because of tri. After keeping case numbers low last year, Vietnam is now dealing with its most serious COVID outbreak so far, with nearly 540,000 infections and more than 30,000 or 13,000 deaths recorded. The vast majority of infections and deaths have been reported since the end of April in Vietnam's capital Hanoi and commercial hub Ho Chi Minh City have been in strict lockdown for most of the past few months. Several people have been sentenced for spreading COVID-19 to others in Vietnam. A 32-year-old man in Haidong was also sentenced to 18 months in prison back in July, and a Vietnam Airlines flight attendant was handed a two-year suspended jail term in March for the same charge. Stay tuned as the CNN Focus will be right back. Totoo ang kasabihang may pera sa basura. Lalo na kung magagawa ang iba't ibang bagay mula sa mga recyclable material na inaakala ng iba na itatapo na. May ilang barangay sa bansa ang nagre-recycle ng basura at makikita ang iba't ibang bagay na gawa sa basura. Mga dekorasyon sa bahay.
proyektong ito, nagiging malinis ang kapaligiran bukod sa mayroon pang pagkakakitaan. Broadcast journalist Wang De La Fuente returns on Philippine television and radio to deliver top stories and engage with the country's policy makers, shapers, and movers. Tatalakayin ang mga pangunahing balita live sa Teleradyo ng Net25 at Radyo Aguila DCEC 1062. Kasama si Wang De La Fuente sa... At itong balita lakayan, believe in interesting times. Malalayong lugar ang kanilang narating para maghanap buhay. Tulungan ang pamilyang iniwan sa sariling bayan. Yan ang ating mga overseas Filipino worker. Pero dahil sa di pang karaniwang pangyayaring hatid ay krisis, may ilan sa kanilang nagpasyang umuwi. Pinagyaman ang sariling lupain Nagtayo ng negosyo na kasama sa puhunan ang sipag at tiyaga. Ang mga OFW, maraming sakripisyo. Ninanais maging kapaki-pakinabang maging sa kanilang pagbabalik bansa. Sapagkat ang ating mga bagong bayani, Pilipino pa rin sa puso at damdamin. watching a CRM focus. Flag carrier Philippine Airlines or, or PAL on Saturday said restructuring will not affect its passengers and employees. The airline has voluntarily filed for a pre-arranged restructuring under the U.S. Chapter 11 process in the Southern District of New York. To implement the consensual restructuring plan, a Chapter 11 bankruptcy allows a company to stay in business and restructure its obligations. In a statement, Powell said the para parallel filing would be made for recognition in the Philippines under the Financial Insolvency and Rehabilitation Act of 2010. This plea, which requires a U.S. court approval, would provide over $2 billion U.S. dollars payment reductions, and other changes from the majority of lessors, lenders, and other creditors. At least 505 million U.S. dollars in fusion via equity and debt will come from its majority shareholder. PAL has arranged for 150 million U.S. dollars of additional debt financing from global private investors to facilitate post-restructuring activities. The trade creditors and suppliers are expected to be unimpaired by the restructuring plan. Paul said adding that passengers and employees will also be unaffected by the restructuring. In a related news, Philippine Airlines will delay or cancel the delivery of over a dozen Airbus planes, according to company officials yesterday adding that the distressed flag carrier is looking to emerge from bankruptcy protection by year-end. Now, according to Nikkei News, the airline was supposed to receive 13 narrow-body aircraft from the European manufacturer in the next five years until the pandemic hammered the aviation industry. Milo Tadeus Rodriguez, the airline's chief financial officer, said in an online news conference, yesterday that they were able to get the support of Airbus to basically postpone those deliveries and give an option to cancel some of those aircraft beyond 2026 to 2030. Now that will depend on how the recovery will shape up. Philippine Airlines said Saturday it was filing for bankruptcy in the United States to slash $2 billion in debt as it tries to survive an industry gutted by the coronavirus pandemic. The national carrier of the Philippines said the filing will allow it to restructure contracts 
and cut debt by at least $2 billion while getting $655 million in fresh capital when it emerges from the Chapter 11 process. Philippine Airlines will also downsize its fleet by 25% and renegotiate contracts to reduce lease payments. In another news in the Philippines, the government decision to lift restrictions on travelers from 10 countries starting Monday was based on improved risk classification assessment and strict border control measures. In an online media forum, Department of Health Under Secretary Maria Rosario Berhere said four weeks prior to the lifting of travel restrictions on India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, Sri Lanka, Nepal, the United Arab Arab of Emirates, Oman, Thailand, Malaysia, and Indonesia, the country adopted the guidelines from the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention of the United States. Over the weekend, President Rodrigo Duterte approved the recommendation to lift the travel restrictions. Berhere said safeguards are in place and the country has strict border controls including required 14 day quarantine 14 days quarantine for inbound travelers regardless of vaccination status the first 10 days of quarantine must be in facility and the remaining 4 days at home to avoid false negative or false positive results the rt pcr test of inbound travelers will be done on the 7th day of quarantine Malacanang on Monday said the global supply problem hampers the government from procuring in bulk COVID-19 treatment drugs, particularly the anti-inflammatory tocilizumab. Presidential spokesperson Harry Roque confirmed that the country is having a shortage of tocilizumab, a repurposed drug for COVID-19 that's the same. Hindi naman ako binigyan yan, pero yan po yung sagot sa pamamaga ng mga vein sa lungs. No? Anti-inflammatory drug po yan. So meron tayong alternatibong ginagamit o gagamitin dahil wala nga po masyadong supply. Thank you, Secretary Roque. Indonesia, Indonesia and the United Arab Emirates on Thursday started negotiations within the framework of the Indonesia-UAE Comprehensive Economic Partnership Agreement to strengthen bilateral trade and investment between the two countries. The rate of price increases accelerated to its fastest since January 2019 at 4.9% last August. But the Banco Central and Pilipinas or BSP maintains that inflation outlook remains broadly balanced and expects within target level by end 2021. BSP Governor Benjamin Diokno in a viber message to journalists on Tuesday said, the August 2021 inflation rate is within the central bank's 4.1% to 4.9% forecast range for last month and is lined with the central bank's assessment that inflation could settle close to the high end of the target range in the near term before decelerating back to within the target range by year end. 
the risks to the inflation outlook remain broadly balanced over the policy horizon, he said. He traced the upside risks to inflation and aggregate demand to the uptick in international commodity prices due to supply chain bottlenecks and the recovery in global demand. Meanwhile, in Thailand, as their exports are expected to rise 10 to 12 percent this year as the global economy recovers. But the country's coronavirus outbreak remains a negative factor, the National Shippers Council said on Tuesday. In the third quarter, exports, a rare bright spot in the economy, are forecast to increase 8 to 10 percent from a, re from a year earlier. The group told a briefing. Thailand is set to reopen more of its popular tourist destinations starting next month. Now, this is to show that higher local inoculation rate can help draw more foreign visitors in. A lack of foreign visitors have crippled the kingdom's tourism-dependent economy, and the dozens of people eking out a living are already feeling the pinch. The reopening of the capital city Bangkok and Chiang Mai, as well as beach resorts Pattaya, Cha'am, and Hua Win from October 1 will be modeled after an initiative to bring back vaccinated tourists to Phuket, according to tourism ministry officials. Now, more destinations, including Chiang Mai, Ko Chang, and Ko Phud, may fully reopen for visitors from mid-October with travel bubbles planned with neighboring countries next year. The kingdom has gradually reopened borders to vaccinated travelers via a quarantine-free program in ultra-popular beach island Phuket, drawing more than 34,700 tourists to its sun-soaked shores since the so-called sandbox launched on July 1. But COVID-19 cases there have also started to climb. Still in Thailand, Phuket is planning new screening measures for visitors starting Wednesday. The Phuket Communicable Disease Committee announced the measures yesterday, which will require visitors who wish to see the island to provide evidence of where they are staying in Phuket with payment made in advance. Visitors will also be required to register through this website and show a QR code to officials at screening points. The measures will be enforced from Wednesday until September 14. The officials say there will be exemptions for public health professionals who work in Phuket and patients who need medical treatment on the island. The nation Thailand says the patients must show evidence of a doctor's appointment and the patient must have been vaccinated with the required doses for at least 14 days or the patient must have recovered from COVID within 90 days. Patients will still need to show a COVID test from an RT-PCR or antigen test within 72 hours of arrival. Meanwhile, the government plans to launch a pilot inbound tourism program with an aim to lure 2 to 3 million foreign arrivals to Phuk Quoc Island. I'm talking about Vietnam by this year's end, according to the Prime Minister, Pan Min Chin. Now, addressing the cabinet meeting on Monday, Pam underscored, containing COVID-19 outbreak is now the highest priority while gradually reopening economic activities in safe areas. He also called for doubling efforts to put the COVID-19 pandemic under control by the end of this month. But preventive measures need to remain in place due to the shortage of vaccines. According to Foreign Minister Bui Chan Son, head of the government's working group on COVID-19 vaccine diplomacy, Vietnam received 33 million doses of vaccines as of September 4, and the figure is expected to increase to around 50 million doses by the end of September. The Southeast Asian country has administered 22 million 12,123 doses with 3,338,783 people fully vaccinated. Still in Vietnam, more than 30 million COVID-19 vaccine doses will land in Vietnam in September and October this year, 
sa Deputy Minister of Health, Tran Van Tuan, at the government's regular press conference on September 6. Currently, three domestically grown vaccines are undergoing clinical trials, including Nanocovax, Covivax, and ARCT-154, Tran said, in adding that Vietnam is striving to make domestic vaccines available in 2022. Speaking at the press conference, Deputy Foreign Minister Nguyen Min Ru reiterated that the government has considered vaccine access as one of the top priorities to protect the public health and reboot the national economy. However, the complex development of Delta variant has led to increasing demand for vaccines, while around 11 billion vaccine doses are required to reach population level or herd immunity in the world. Only 4.5 billion doses have been produced. Thus, vaccine shortage is a challenge to all countries, including Vietnam, he added. The number of vaccine doses arriving in Vietnam increased from 16.6 million in early August to 33 million in late August, announced Nguyen, adding that in September, the country is expected to receive additional 17 million doses. In other news, Singapore has opened a wildlife forensic center that aims to help in the fight against smuggling networks by analyzing seized body parts from endangered animals from ivory to pangolin scales. Let's listen in. DNA sequences actually allow us to identify uh, very accurately um, down to the species level, whether they are actually uh, illegal wildlife uh, parts. And also it allows us then again to uh, look at the sequences to see where they come from. Uh, further on to that, we do collect samples from these uh, sea specimens. Uh, and for example, you know, uh, when, we, when we seize the ivory and pangolin, uh, before we actually crushed them and got rid of them, incinerated them, so that uh, it doesn't go back into the market, um, we actually sampled from them so that um, we can actually um, access the rich source of information that DNA sequences actually give us. Criminal syndicates have long trafficked animal parts used in traditional Asian medicine and for decorative purposes through the city-state, an international trading hub. Scientists at the new center are using DNA analysis and other techniques to investigate such specimens from seizures made by the authorities and they aim to determine where the body parts originated from according to adrian Liu from the national parks board which runs the center the data could be used to piece together the operations of smuggling networks and shared with other countries to help investigate and prosecute poachers and traffickers two studies are currently being carried out at the center the first, in collaboration with a U.S. conservation biologist, is examining ivory seized globally from 1995 to 2019 to determine if shipments seized in different countries are linked. The second is focused on pangolins and aims to fight syndicates targeting the world's most trafficked mammal, also known as the scaly anteater. World Rugby announced on Friday this year's seven tournaments in Singapore and Cape Town have been cancelled due to COVID-19 travel restrictions. Events in Vancouver on September 18 to 19 and Edmonton a week later for men and women will be the only competitions on this season circuit. Next year's series will start on the weekend of this November 26 to 27 in Dubai, with a second event a week later in the same city. Tournaments in Sydney and Hamilton in New Zealand will not be part of the campaign due to the coronavirus pandemic.
Thank you, Crystal, for joining me today. Keep safe, always. You too, Alma. And that is the latest news in the Southeast Asian nations. Stay updated about the ASEAN region. I'm Crystal Ann Balesteros from your EBC Cambodia Bureau. And we'll live in interesting times. Thank you, Crystal. And we'll see you back tomorrow. I'm Alma Angeles. We live in interesting times. Mapupuno ng saya, impormasyon at inspirasyon ang hapon mo sa Afternoon Power. Handog sa inyo ng Net25. Sasabay sa inyong tangalian ang inyong Happy Time Barkada at 12 noon. Alamin ang mga pangyayari sa ASEAN Nations, ASEAN in Focus at 2 p.m. Ang inyong paboritong awit komentaryo, kasama si Leo Obligar sa Piskante ng Bayan! At mga balita sa iba't ibang panig ng bansa, hatid sa atin sa Agila, Probinsya. Siksik ang hapon mo mula lunes hanggang biyernes, ang inyong Afternoon Power sa Net25. We know that this is a scary time for all of us. The coronavirus is changing the world. It's changing our lives. So please, take care of yourself. Keep your distance. Wash your hands. And if you can, stay at home. We at DW are here for you. We are working tirelessly to keep you informed on all of our platforms. We're all in this together. And together, we'll make it through. Stay safe, everybody. Stay safe. Stay safe. Stay safe. Please, stay safe. Hello! Ako po si Avon Rosales at may tutuparin akong isang letter sender request ngayong linggo, September 12, sa La Rosen Music from 1 to 2 p.m. Dito lamang po sa Net25. I'll see you guys there.